This morning we have Matt Rodway, who is the waiver ombudsman, and he's going to be talking to us um, pretty much about what his role is, how you can utilize him, and how he can be of assistance to you, to the individuals that you serve. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, Matt, and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Advocacy Links, thanks for uh, asking for me to just chat with you. Uh, I usually uh, I usually do this in person. I don't mind at all discussing what I do um, and just giving an idea of, of some, some topics and things you can call me about. Um, first of all, you can call me about anything. Uh, I think, you know, I'm not going to tell Joy or, or Amy or I, I don't know exactly the structure of the administration there. I'm not going to tell... I don't, I don't think they're telling you that you can't call me and they shouldn't be doing that, but you can call me anytime um, about anything, to be honest with you. Um, that's how I see my job. That's what I do. Um, I asked, you know, while we're on that topic, just leave me a message if, you, if I don't answer, because if you don't leave a message, I won't call back. I can tell you that because I get so many phone calls. I just don't know who calls me if I don't get a message. But um you know, as a, as a, Amy's right, uh, my title is is the waiver ombudsman. It is listed as such in in state regulations, um, or actually state statute. Uh, my job is an appointed position um, by the director. Uh, I, I I am a state employee, uh, but given the fact that I'm outlined in state statute, it gives me a little protection on. Um, what do you want to say, retaliation by the agency if I find something, say, wrong with BDDS or BQIS or something of that nature. Um, so uh, going back to, it is outlined as waiver ombudsman, but but when I started this, this job, which was, I don't know, five or six years ago, um, my question to the administration at the time was, was well, why can't I help with anything? You know, I, I, I've worked in group homes in the past, so I've got a background in group home stuff. Uh, why can't I help there? And, and you know, why can't I take a phone call from a family that has no services? Um, so that's what I do. You know, it's one of those, it's not written down that I can't do that. So I've interpreted it. We, the administration has interpreted it. I can, I can do what I do uh, and the best of my ability, obviously. And I know you guys aren't group home, you know, related, but, you know, obviously, if it's a a group home issue, then then you know they're surveyed and overseen, as Joy knows, by the Indiana State Department of Health. Um, so I don't get in their way. Although sometimes Indiana State Department of Health calls me to help with guardians uh, in group homes. Um, or again, you know, someone will call me and saying, you know, how do I get into services? I don't say, well, you're not in services, so don't call me. You know, I direct them to where they need to go. Typically, the Bureau of Developmental Disabilities. So, and, and and I get you know calls as you can imagine about anything. And 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 I see my job is trying to help people resolve their issue. And if it's not me, then I I, I typically can direct people to the right agency, the right uh, office. Um, so that's that's kind of how the beginning of my job works. To give you a little background on myself. Um, I've been working in this field for, I don't know, 26, 27 years now. I started working direct care. Um, I worked in group homes. I was a group home manager. I oversaw group homes. Uh, I worked in waiver settings, executive director for an agency. Um, I've worked for the state itself for about, I don't know, 16, 17 years, I think maybe. Uh, I started out as a service coordinator in a local office and then just working my way up through district manager, um, field service coordinator, who is actually Holly Wimsett at this point, um, regional director, uh, things like that. And then and then when uh, Brian Reynolds, who was the original ombudsman for the state of Indiana, retired, uh, I was appointed this position, and I've been doing it for about six or seven years again. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. I've seen a lot. Um, there's not too much that, that you, you, I don't mean you directly, but there's not too much that I say I've, I've never seen that. And, you know, sometimes people try to, 
maybe perceive that I don't know what they're talking about, but I do. I've seen a lot. So I use a lot of my experience on how I can assist people, um, my opinion, things of that nature. Um, so again, to, that, that's a little background of where I'm standing and, and how, I, how I view things. Um, what can I do to help you? Again, I can give you my opinion. You know, I might not have answers, but I'll give you my opinion. Um, and I'm, you know, I'd be happy to bounce things around to try to resolve some issues that you guys have seen or have. Um, so, so keep that in mind as, as, as I discuss stuff. A couple of things I, I, I do have that I can mention. Um, I don't do guardianships. Don't, don't, don't call and say, hey, I need a guardian. Um, obviously, the state doesn't have any money to establish guardianships. So, um, you know, obviously, I don't have any connection there. There are various guardianship programs throughout the state, but I don't have a hotline to the guardianship saying, hey, give me a guardian, you know, mainly through like the VASIA program. Um, I, I will tell you, if, if you call me and say, I need a guardian, I'm going to ask you why, and I'm going to expect a, 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 I'm going to expect justification as to why you think somebody needs a guardian. I will tell you, I'm not a big proponent of individuals in our services needing guardians. I mean, it has to be a reason for it. So if the expectation is that you're going to call the ombudsman and he's going to support me and he's going to get me a guardian, that's mistaken. That's not what I do. Um, so I want you know want to make make that uh, point. Um, I don't get into budgets as much. Of course, budgets these days aren't as much an issue as what they used to be. Um, you know, but I, I just don't. I I. I've, I've said that when I first started, because if that's what I did, that's all I would do. I can help with a Beamer. If you need a Beamer um, that, that you know, that I feel and know and you know that needs improved and it's kind of an emergency kind of thing, I can help push that through. You know, I don't mind, you know, doing that, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a call and say, you know, I'm not going to listen and say, you know, or not, I shouldn't say listen, but I'm not going to sit here and, and, and in a sense open a discussion about why somebody needs additional dollars there's a process for that you know there's a brq all that good stuff um so I, I really don't i don't do that um i can help you know i can help find out things you know like hey where's this what's the status of this or what you know brq beamer things like that um i don't mind discussing you know maybe uh you know who or what but again, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of why and how somebody needs a new budget. Um, same goes for the CIH waiver. I don't, I don't, I don't take my position as getting the CIH waiver for somebody. If I did that, as you can imagine, that's all I would do. Um, I will assist with getting the CIH waiver if it's a situation that's outlined, you know, at, uh, i.e., as in. As in, you know, loss of a primary caregiver, APS involvement, I will assist in that, but just to call and 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 because of health and safety needs, say, hey, I, I want your endorsement or I want your uh, assistance in getting the CIH waiver, I, I don't do that. I just, it's it's not something that I feel is, is appropriate as the ombudsman. Again, there's a process for that. They're all the way through the appeals. There's, there's process for CIH. Um, what I will do, uh, and I don't mind doing, is it if if a guardian, and not really a guardian, I should say, if a family, I guess even you guys, but I don't, I don't, I don't honestly know how you operate on this, but if if someone is writing a, a CIH request, um, I'd be happy to look at it. You know, if someone's written it. And say, hey, you know, before I submit it, will you review it? I don't mind doing that. Um, I've even gone and, and met with families, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, tell me why you need it, and and I'll help and I'll not help you, but I'll kind of tell you, help you as far as focus on what the issue is here, and and help and 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 give you uh, some focus on what you need to put on paper. I don't mind doing that, um, and I will do that. Uh, 
I'm not gonna make it a blown up proportion. I've had people send it back for like three or four reviews. And I tell you, after about the first one or second one, maybe I'm done. I'm not, I'm not a proofreader. I'm, you know, that's not my job, I, but I will review it and I will give my input. Um, and, and so that's what I will do on, on the CIH waiver. Uh, sorry. Let's see. Some things I can I can possibly help with and and not is as I can possibly help with Medicaid. Um, I do have some some uh, contacts, if you will, at Medicaid to maybe uh, find out what's wrong with the situation, um, try to get it corrected. Um, I, I can do that uh, if you have issues with that. Um, I can't really help with the the you know eligibility part of it you know obviously if, if medicaid comes back and says somebody's not eligible they're not eligible per their per their determination right i can't twist their arm to make them eligible i can i can assist with keeping their medicaid current under appeals so that they can keep the waiver uh but i i can't twist their arm to make somebody eligible but i can help find out where it is what the problem is you know we all know that medicaid you know, well, at times um, cut people off and, and, you know, we've all seen those letters and they're kind of hard to discern sometimes. So I, I, I can talk to Medicaid and, and, you know, get a better explanation at times. So that I can do. Um, so a little bit on that. Same, uh, so a little bit on Medicaid in that, that regard. Um, Social Security, I, I really can't help with Social Security. I don't have much intel. <laughs> At Social Security, I mean, Social Security obviously is a federal organization. Um, I do have, I can't help with the Social Security investigation, but I can't, uh, you know, when it comes to Social Security denying somebody, um, that's really, you know, their call. I can't help with that. Um, you know, again, I can, I can help keep the Medicaid open during a Social Security appeal. And if you guys don't know that already, if if somebody's denied Social Security, you need to tell that person or the guardian that they need to appeal it right away or definitely within the time frame because that will keep their Medicaid open. So, and then I can communicate with Medicaid to keep it open while it's under Social Security appeals. So anyway, that's one of the things I, I thought about as far as services and, and, and all the components or some of the components that we have on the waiver. Um what uh i can help i can help find roommates i mean not really find roommates but i may i i might know of some individuals looking for roommates just in the fact of all the communications that i have with people in my daily uh calls emails things of that nature so so you you, you know, don't flood me with them <laughs> don't, don't flood me with a bunch of i need a roommate for this but you, you might ask because sometimes it's tough uh, I know finding a roommate, especially now, but um, I may have some information on that one. You know, I can help with that. Um, guardians, back to guardians. I, I can help, and that's kind of been my thing the last, I don't know, year, year and a half. I think I think with COVID and everything, it um, the guardianships, guardians themselves have been... I don't know how to say it different. Um, I can help you with mediation of guardians, put it that way. Um, guardians are not the be all end all, you know, when it comes to services and, and saying what goes. We all know that there at times is a guardian that is just, I don't know if it's their expectations. I don't know if it is they're just uh, inability to see the services for the good of the client. Um, but there are guardians that, that at times make some outlandish is probably appropriate word demands. Um, and, and that's not right. And I do and have, and will continue to, um, have a discussion with the guardians to say, you know, you're out of line. Um, 
both for the benefit of the client and for the benefit of the team. You know, I, I, I expect and, and majority of case managers do, you know, attempt to resolve the issue before calling me. Um, but, but I do get it. I mean, you, you do hit a, a roadblock with guardians and, and it's just out, out, outrageous demand. Um, so, you know, I'll say feel free, but feel free to contact me if you, if you're having those kind of issues. Um, I can, you know, removing guardians. I've removed guardians for reasons, obviously. Um, you know, I, one of the downfalls I don't have is I don't have an attorney. I don't have an attorney on, on staff, you know, through FSSA that I can grab, but I can, I can, if really needed, you know, yeah, my point is, is if really needed in say like removing a guardian, um, I can typically find an attorney to do it, uh, to help file the paperwork, things like that. Um, so it's, it's not a fun process. It's a lengthy process, but I, I can, I can assist with that. So to give you a flip side, I can remove guardians, but I really can't get you a guardian or I really, you know, going to ask you more about getting a guardian than I probably will removing one. Um, I can see your notes. I do read your notes. I do, you know, I have access to all the stuff. Uh, you know, B, you know, BDDS's Dart system, uh, the portal, whatever it may be called these days. I don't get into insight. I think I lost my password. I'm glad I lost my password. Um, but I do see your notes. Um, when I do get a call, whether it be from the client or guardian or, or anybody, provider, let's say, because, you know, obviously I'll take, I'll, I'll get a call from anybody on the team. Um, typically the first thing I ask is, is, you know, where's the case manager on this? You know, have you talked to the case manager? Um, and I, I want to just hear what they have to say uh, as far as their case management input. And then I'll go read your notes. And then I'll typically reach out to you. I'm not a big email per. I mean, I'm not a big long email person. So I'll tell you that. But I'll typically shoot you an email and say, you know, hey, I got a call from so-and-so about, you know, X, Y, Z. What do you know about it? And, you know, you can call me if you if it's too long. You know, if you, if you don't want to put in an email, it's too long. That's fine. You can call me. But I want your input before I, that's, you know, as I start to look into stuff. And you're usually the first person I reach out to because, honestly, my expectation is, is that you, as the case manager should be aware of uh, what's going on. When I shoot you an email, more than likely I'll copy your supervisor, um, not because I don't have faith in you. I just want to make sure that uh, I keep in line with any, any, I don't know, things that you have going on as, as working for, you know, advocacy links. Um, so that's, I just typically copy your supervisor is all I do. So, uh, you know, that's when I first get a call, that is what I do. Um, and, and obviously with meetings, the way things are these days, um, I don't, uh, you know, obviously do a lot of stuff virtual. I think it's going to stay that way for a while. I think even when it does cool down, I think we can still do some things virtual because there were times when I would go to meetings and I, I just didn't need to be there in person, but we'll work on that. But, you know, if you want me to attend a meeting, let me know, you know, I'll work in my schedule. We can work it out. I have no problem doing that. Um, so, you know, that's how I can, you know, that's how I typically look at things uh, from the very beginning. Uh, and again, I'll take, a, I take calls, I get calls from a lot of people, you know, again, behavior consultants, providers, case managers, guardians, clients, hospitals, uh, attorneys, police. Um, and, and, you know, I could just go on and, and again, typically when I get that call, I'm going to look to you, uh, at the very beginning for just some input, you know, give me some grounded information. So that's how I typically start something. Um, let's see, what else did I write now? Uh, is there any questions while we got it going? Okay, we have a couple that have come in. Um, first of all, somebody said you're a great person to go to and that you're a great you. advocate to get services that people need. Thank um, you. Is, is there only one ombudsman for the state? There is, there, and that is me. 
there is only one ombudsman for individuals with intellectual disabilities. Um, there is actually, I don't know, three or four within the whole United States. I had a call with the state of Utah the other day. They want to start an ombudsman program. Theirs was a little bit different. But yeah, I'm the only ombudsman for individuals with intellectual disabilities. To give you a perspective, um, there's the vision of aging, you know, long-term care ombudsman, as you see it, they're then typically called, um, is uh, there's actually two, uh, Lynn Klo and Mary Swinford are state employees as a long-term care ombudsman. But then there's also a long-term care ombudsman in each area agency. Uh, throughout the state and I think there's nine area agencies if I'm right so yeah there's like 11 of them and one of me but that's okay I like working by myself I don't have to supervise anybody um, and then somebody asked if they could have your phone number and email yeah, sure yeah 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 sure um, the best number for me is my cell phone number which is 317-503-1217 my email address is matt m a t t dot rodway r o d w a y at f s s a dot i n dot g o v. I do have. I have to look it up. Let me see if I can find a business card sitting here. Um, I do have. I do have an eight hundred number. I'm not going to bother giving you that because the eight hundred number. When somebody calls it, I share it with the long-term care ombudsman. I share it with Mary and Lynn. Um, when you call the eight, in the 800 number, it uh, it asks if you want to talk to them or if you want to. And if you want to talk to them, it says press one. If you want to talk to me, press two. This is a little confusing. Either way, that 800 number gets directed to my cell phone anyway. So feel free to to call my cell phone, the 317-503 number. Um, Feel free to give that out to anybody. You know, sometimes I'll get, excuse me, sometimes I'll get emails and, and people will say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a guardian. Can I give them your number? Yeah, you don't, you don't have to ask me to give them the number. Give it. I, I joke with people. I think my phone number is, is on billboards throughout the whole state of Indiana. So, yeah, you don't have to ask me, you know, to give out that stuff. You don't have to ask me um, uh, if, if, you know, so-and-so can call me, um, just give them my number. And again, just tell them to leave a message if I don't answer, because again, if I don't have a message, I won't call you back, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, and another praise, Matt has been great every time. So every time, well, that's great. <laughs> well, yeah, guys, I try, you know, I, I tell you, I, I try and, and, and you know, what, what, what you're going to get is my opinion. You know, I try to put as much emphasis on what I do and and you know guidance in what I do, but at the but at the end of the day, if if, if you don't and I don't mean you directly, but I mean I guess the team or maybe even guardians or even clients for that matter, if you don't follow my input, a you're not hurting my feelings, it, and it's not a binding input. You know, um, mm -hmm. the thing is, is you know I'll go to a meeting or we'll have a conversation and I'll give you my input. Don't call me two months later and say, we want your input again, because A, I already gave it to you and B, chances are it wasn't followed. And you know, it's not gonna change. So so I, I will give you my input. I'm not afraid of giving my input. And and the other thing too is, is uh, not, you know, not so much with case managers as it is guardians or families, but my input may not be what you what you wanna hear. Um, but I'll give you a truthful input. Um, you know, a lot of times guardians, as my title says, the ombudsman, um, a lot of times guardians will call me and, and, and present a situation and, and I won't, I won't agree with them. You know, I'll, you know, I don't see, you know, from what I've gathered, I don't see it the way that they see it, but they, ex they, they, they expect me to agree with them just because. And that's not how I operate. You know, I look at my job as making it an even playing field for everybody. And what I mean by that is, is 
to make it an even playing field for everybody in services, whether that be somebody that's not in services or whether that be somebody on a CIH waiver that has 24 hours, two on one, living by themselves. You know, I'll be one of the people that's, you know, and this is just a, a, a hypothetical thing, but you know, I have no problem saying, why are we giving that person two on one, you know, 24 hours, you know, to me, that's that's not a slight on that person or their services, but it's, I maybe see something that they don't need that because to me, that's in a sense taken away from somebody else that might need some additional hours. So again, I look at my job as, you know, trying to make it an even playing field for everyone. Um, and that goes to you all, you know, honestly, and some of you I'm sure have seen this, I'll tell you when you're wrong. Um, I don't mean it, I, I, I think I'm really good at not making it personal, but I'll tell you that when you're wrong. Um, and, and then on the flip side, you can disagree with me. If we're having a conversation and, and I give my input and you say, you know, hey, I don't see it this way or hey, what about this? I'm all for input, I am, I'm all for let's just have a chat and you know, throw darts at the dartboard and let's come up with a solution. You know, I'm not here to sit here and say that just by calling me and me giving my input, you know, I'm the be all end all. Um, so, you know, I'll do that. Um, I'll confer with BDDS, you know, at times if needed. I don't have a problem going to the local office going, what have you done? Um, and, and and you didn't do enough. Um, and, and, and on the flip side too of that, uh, there will be times when people will call me and they will ask for, for, for my involvement. And if I see, I don't know, like a BQIS investigation has already been opened, um, I'll step back. You know, A, I'll let that BQIS investigation finish up. I'm not going to get into the middle of a BQIS ongoing investigation. Um, I tell people that, you know, after that investigation and after you get the results, if you want to chat about that, I'd be happy to. But I'm not going to muddy it up anymore. Or I shouldn't say anymore, but I, I'm not going to muddy up an investigation, just like I'm not going to muddy up an APS investigation. You know, we all we all know this, and and that, this is again not not really particularly pointed towards case managers as much as it is guardians or families. You know, they'll call they'll call around, and that's fine. But you know, they'll 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 say things like, "Well, I've called APS, and I've called BQIS, and I've got my attorney." And I'm like, well, "Why do you need me? Why are you calling me?" Um, and, and again, if, and I tell them in that instance that I just gave you is, is after all that dust is settled, if, if, and you've got some, some responses, give me a call. Or if you don't get a call back, you know, if, if you, if you call a BQIS and they don't call you back in like a week, call me, you know, I'll follow up with that. But I'm not going to interject. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't make myself a duplicate, duplicative, uh, service. Um, you know, people are, are, are free to call whoever they want. And especially attorneys, you know, people will say, well, I've got my attorney on this and we're looking at this. I'm out. I'm out because, you know, then it becomes a legal matter. And then it's Matt Rodway said this and Matt Rodway said that. And, 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 and I'll tell you, and hopefully some of you have seen this, I'll stand by what I say, but I'm also not going to get drug into a legal matter um, of, you know, while it's going on. You know, that's a whole other ball game. You know, I do go to court and, and just FYI for you guys. I mean, I do go to court. Give me a subpoena. I'll go. But but again, once I hear that legal stuff, I'm out. So just to give you an input on that one. Um, what would be some situations where maybe parents or individuals would call you? What kind of things typically involve the ombudsman? Well, I mean, really anything. You know, a family may call me and say, um, you know, having issues with a provider, you know, I've got a provider, you know, they, you know, they, uh, I'm trying to think here off the top of my head, I, a lot, you know, a lot of calls from parents saying my provider is not doing this, you know, my provider uh, is, is not sending staff over uh, my, or, or let's say, you know, they're having trouble for some reason, getting the medication straight. Um, the provider had a staff, that took my daughter to her personal house um, and the staff's you know obviously still there i can't tell somebody to fire their staff um but help mediate you know kind of help bring in the team back together if they've all kind of gone wayward how about that um 
I can't really think of, I'm trying to think of a, a good example uh, of, of, a, uh, of a situation. Um, you know, the, or, or, you know, families will call, you know, they have having issues with behavior consultant. My behavior consultant wants to do this. I'm not in agreement. What do you think? You know, I'll give my opinion. And if it means we get the behavior consultant on the phone and go, you know, why are you doing this? Then, then we do it. Um, you know, honestly, I don't get a whole lot of calls from, uh, from guardians that, that complain about their case manager. They, you know, I, uh, you know, sometimes they'll call and say, Hey, I can't get a hold of my case manager. Clients do this a lot. Clients will call me and, and they'll say, uh, uh, or they'll call me and say, you know, hey, uh, they're not giving me any money or I don't have any groceries, you know, that kind of stuff. And the first thing I say is, well, have you talked to your case manager? And they're like, yeah, I call them and 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 I've called them and they won't call me back. And I'll say, well, when did you call them? Well, I just called them five minutes ago. And I'm like, well, you're not giving them any time to call you back. And then how many times did you call them? I called them three times. You don't need to call your case manager three times in one day. Um that's that's from the client perspective but again from, from i don't get a whole lot from the guardian's perspective of of you know hey you know my my case manager's not doing this you know i might get it you know hey my case manager is having a problem with maybe getting the budget the budget's hung up on something you know some technicality i can look into that but i don't know i'm sorry that's a poor example of of what i get but i get a lot i get a lot of calls okay um, and then somebody asked training issues. I've asked her to give, if Amy, if you could get a little more specific about what you mean related to training issues. Training um, issues? Yeah, so yeah, I've asked her to give us a little bit more specifics as to what she's relating that to oh. so I can make sure you know. Oh yeah, yeah, cause I don't what, know. What she's, what she's wanting. So she'll type yeah. in, I'm sure. Oh, okay, um, yeah. About how many times a year are you out you know or or about how many individuals a year would you guess that you work with with issues um well i guess i don't know i mean it's it's a question i mean it, it how many how many emails do i get how many phone calls do i get on a daily basis um i don't know it could be anywhere from 10 to 30 to 50 calls, emails on different topics, sure. Uh, as far as meetings go, obviously that's changed a little bit now, but right. um, I mean, you know, it, it just depends. It, it really, even when I was out more, it just depends. And, you know, it, it you know, uh, three, four, I mean, sometimes five days a week, I would be on the road, if you will, um, going to meetings. Um, wow. So, I mean, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I would drive to, and I know you guys are up there. I would drive to Fort Wayne and back in one day, um, if needed, you know, and I'll continue to do that if needed. I, I'm, I'm thinking now that maybe things have changed a little, even again, like I said, after this all settled down, that, that maybe we could do some of this virtual with, without face to face. But I also understand that the, I don't know, impacts the right word. The impact that a face-to-face -face meeting has, as opposed to, to you know, through the through the virtual, right? And, yeah. and a lot of that is, you know, typically for guardians and and clients. Um, and it it does make a difference. And it, we all know, and I've seen it, you know, especially with a client, you know, that that needs some some direction. That I walk in and say, hey, you know, I'm at Rodway. I'm from the state, right? I'm the state guy. I've had people yell at me, get out of my meeting, state guy. That's fine. Um, um, I, I did get clarity on the training issue. Okay. So um, basically what she would like to know is um, if we're having issues with a provider, you know, making sure that staff are trained before sending them to a family home or a supported living home. Um, she has several frustrated parents that feel like the burden, burden of the training is their responsibility. And when she's addressed it with a provider, it doesn't seem to fix the problem. Right. What, how would I address that? Um, yeah. Is that something that would be helpful to bring the ombudsman in it for? Could be, yeah. I mean, I don't mind. I do do that. Um, you know, would it be helpful? We'll know, you know, after we do it, but yeah, my, just off the top of my head, my approach to that would be is, um, 
you know, what are they doing? What's the provider doing for the training? Um, how is it outlined? Let's have a meeting because obviously whatever's outlined now isn't working. And you're right. I mean, the onus is on the provider for that. Uh, you know, I, so my, my advice would be to let's have a discussion. Let's get some outline of that. You know, let's, we're, we're going to have some, some, some solid, um, expectations, dates, things of that nature to, to correct this training issue. Um, now, again, without knowing the case specifically, uh, some of the training, you know, it may be beneficial to fall on the parents, um, if the parents, if that's the example, um, just because of, you know, knowledge of the individual, right? Right. But, but no, you're, you're right. It's, 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 it's not the, 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 the sole responsibility of the parent to do that. So no, yeah, I would help with that. Sure. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Matt? Give everybody a minute. You've given us lots of good information and I know it's, we've, we have a lot of new case managers um, who've joined us over the last year or so. So it's good for them to kind of learn about what you do and how you can help and, and and basically kind of be there to be that mediator to kind of help get everybody hopefully on the same page and doing what's best for the individual yeah i again you know feel free to call i don't mind you know it's and i don't want to i think bdds is is a good organization and 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 you know sometimes you can call if if you need me to check on something that maybe bdds uh is is doing or isn't doing in regards to something that you need um but yeah, all I all I can just say is is feel free to give me a call. I'm I'm open to discussion. And I know I've used Ombudsman services in the past, and it's sometimes just nice to have an outsider perspective who's looking at the situation objectively um, and can bring a different perspective to the team and help you see things that maybe both sides didn't see before, or to maybe try to find that common ground. And so it really can be beneficial. To bring in to bring Matt in to a situation where you're having problems. So um, we haven't had any more questions brought. So I don't want to keep you longer than necessary. I know you've probably got plenty to do today. Um, and so I, I really do appreciate your time this morning, Matt, and well, your willingness to come talk to us. Well, you're welcome. Hopefully, I covered it enough. I I I, I kind of. I think I gave you a good background of where I'm at. I know I didn't take the full hour. I apologize for that. Oh, you're fine. Um, but yeah, again, if, if I can help in any way, uh, feel free to, to just give me a call or shoot me an email. All righty. Okay. Well, thank you so much again for your time. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So...